Welcome back. I am Lonnie Webb, and this is painting Fat Girl number two, pages seven and eight. And we are also going to be smoking some prime rib. I did some recording on Thanksgiving Day, and I'm going to show you the steps that uh, we went through to make prime rib for Thanksgiving. Here we go! This is how the prime rib for Thanksgiving starts. Take a look at that. We got butter smacked and smeared all around that. We got us some twine tied on there so that after we took some fat off, trimmed it up, the bone is still held together. That bone is still going to be there. And my smoker isn't quite big enough for the double wide pan, so we're crunching it up a little bit. We got we got a bunch of people, so we're using two prime ribs today. Here, let's let's look at this. Oh yeah, here we go. Properly rested up. It's on rack. Yeah. So it's it's going to sit in the pan on the rack. It's not going to burn. It's going to be pretty. Just waiting for the fire to get nice and hot because we got to start at 500 degrees. We got to get that sear on there. Yes, we do. We got to start with the sear and then cool it way down to about 300. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I'll check in a little bit. Okay, this is what the, uh, the first page, page seven, is going to look like when we're done. And, uh, can see that the the real beauty shot here is panel number three uh, so we're going to we're going to make fat girls leap before the full moon the beauty shot of the whole page so Evan has already done the uh, the work to uh, pull the page together I'm cutting the mask for the face and then another layer we'll pick up with uh, cutting some more masks. <clears throat> um, so notice Evan's pulling the page together in a couple of different ways. The uh, he he wants to he wants a diagonal read from top left to bottom right. So he has put the statue on top of the uh, the building which ties the Fat Girl series together as an image. She's pointing to that image. She's holding her hand up and her body makes a triangle down to that foot which pulls all of our visual acuity first over to that uh, uh, that statue. We look down. We see Fat Girl running on the rooftop and then we take in uh, the rest of her form that pulls us to to just look left to right and read the the whole page the uh, the background for the page is all going to be a, a, a very dark navy and um, we'll throw some backgrounds here in in each of these panels that is a separate layer the the pink elements are a separate layer and uh, everything is is being cut into masks, and by by color level, I'm putting it into uh, different layers. I end up with a lot of layers this time, but that's that's okay. That's so that I can, uh, if if I make a palette mistake, I can turn a uh, an entire color off. Uh, Let's see. Now let let's uh, pay a lot of attention to the uh, the way that 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 building and the elements in her uniform are going to come together, and that is going to be with believe it or not with this lighter blue making up a halo around the moon. It's a full moon. Um, I, 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 I love the, uh, the misty halo that the, uh, the full moon gives us 
and that lighter blue is going to draw us uh, color-wise to the statue. Now we're getting the elements of her uniform. I'm going to just add some more here. There needs to be lots and lots of shading because she's in shadow. But we want her to stand out still. So her lighting is going to be largely indirect. And you can see we now have her... Uh, the the middle of her body is in shadow. We'll pull the fat girl symbol out a little bit. And we'll have to drop some more grays around the armor. <clears throat> Put in some uh, uh, berry reds. Uh, and some highlights, again, from the indirect lighting. When we're finished, you should be able to see that Fat Girl's been in some scrapes between issues. So there will be some marring of her armor, of her, the... Uh, the fabric on her gloves, even her face is going to show dirt and scrapes. Uh, very minor, but uh, that helps with continuity to keep it very minor. But uh, we, we still have to show that. Uh, no point in losing track of it just because we're doing colors. Um, so we... We put lots of shadow on these little bits of the armor. And we've got to draw out some extra detail. Evan put lots and lots of detail. So we'll pull in some perspective with some differences of lighting. And I'm going to fumble around with this, uh, this second panel a lot. Um, I couldn't really make up my mind on how much perspective to put on and how much to let the, uh, the street lighting come through. And I ended up deciding that on panel two, it's going to be a little bit dominated by the street lighting because we have candles, we have fires, uh, plus we have this uh, Bradley vehicle moving around, flashing lights, and uh, Fat Girl is lit in multiple directions. But I chose to pull back on the amount of orange to put on to uh, Fat Girl's body because that uh, that took away from the glorious leap when I when I thought it through. So in her the third panel, the the beauty shot, I don't put a whole lot of orange in there. There is a little bit, there's some subtle orange, but by and large, it's only going to appear to uh appear in her armor on the first panel and the final panel uh, as as the reflections come about. The real action is happening on these uh, these backgrounds today. The uh, the little details, the little shadows here on the uh, the elements of her uniform are, are the most time consuming because I have to cut each one of these, but um, and and most of these I'm keeping in the pink layer because I've 
I'm commit. I've already committed to them. I'm going to have them there, and uh, there, there's, there's no reason, reason to really separate them out. Let's pull a little bit up over here, and yes, I am. I'm saving the plume for last. I'm I'm not even going to touch her plume until I'm done with the page. I think the plume will be the last thing that I do. <clears throat> I really should have gotten another drink. And with the final panel, we've got her standing out a little bit. And there is a little bit of orange. I, th I think I've put too much orange on the first in that mix. And that's okay. I'll come back and I'll put, uh, I'll put lots of street. I'll end up putting lots of street lighting and and reflection on there. These these little shadows in her in her uniform are very, very time consuming. But it pays off. It really pays off. Um the the roundness of the glove, the roundness of the uh, the the shoulder elements, and um, the uh, the shape of these uh, clunky knee pads. You see there, I dropped in a little bit of paint to uh, to make the rivets stand out. I don't know how functional that is. I was thinking about that the other day. If I had an, a knee pad with a rivet, would that absorb or magnify an impact? I really don't know. I, uh, I, I can't seem to make a decision on that because I've, I've uh, worn construction gear when I was a teenager both ways uh, uh, heavy leather versus uh, some uh, padding with uh, a plastic cover and uh, and protuberances and I uh, I honestly couldn't tell you which one was the uh, the better way to go even now We've got the uh, got a little bit of reflective lighting on her helmet and her uh, shield over the top there by her head. Uh, we're dropping in some pink there to keep that uh, to to bring out. It doesn't take a lot. It just a little bit of pink to to. Uh, bring out that quality of of the color up top. Realistically, we probably wouldn't see it like that. She might even be all black in a uh in a proper photograph. But um here here's one of my decisions with style. We're gonna let that stand out. And we're getting some more uh more lighting effects on the shield. And let's see, where do we go next? The knee pads. Picking up a little bit of that, uh, that lighter highlight. And we'll eventually drop some orange here. Not too much. 
highlight on the boots. Really got to bring out this creases in the boots. And I think I've decided that it really is the best way to go with having metal rivets. And you want to stand off that impact from the, uh, from the patella. So I think Evan really did the right thing there. Yeah. I don't know where the impact would really go first. I suppose it it could be directed with some uh some neoprene on the back side. You could direct that impact into the shin. The shin can take an impact quite easily. And if you're coming down on it, the uh the bones in the in the leg are phenomenally sturdy. I want to make sure that I do come back and put some green in that glass. When it comes to cityscapes, I like lots of green, lots of um, Okay, drop that blue in and then hmm, back to mass cutting. Always back to mass cutting. I probably spend more time thinking about it than actually doing it. It's time to put on our belt buckle. And we'll start by dropping in some orange. And it's a silvery buckle. So we'll come back from the top and we're going to do some kind of a reversed reflection from what we've normally been doing with this belt buckle, throw some orange up on the armor, and uh, got a mix of the uh, the magenta and the berry and the silver going on here. Again, we've got some orange coming up on the opposite side of that boot. And I don't know if I did the color just right on the uh, the uniform behind the shield there. It needs to be darker, so just have to keep it lighter to the street facing side. Shoulder elements, chest, shield. Uh, I'm going to have to come back and put a lot of highlight on that. And we're in panel number one here. That's, uh, I don't know if that can stay that color. Yeah, see? Uh, too much. Gonna have some magenta. Gonna have some blues. But no matter how you do it, it's too much. So it's gotta be blended.
This is one thing I do like about working with layers this way. Is that uh, I have a little freedom to spread my attention out a little bit. I can work over here and up in the middle and then back to panel two. And even though I'm putting a little bit of orange, yeah, I'm uh, panel three. Putting putting a little bit of orange in all the street facing parts of Fat Girl. You see that? See that right there? And Gauntlet. Not sure about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a luminous layer over the whole thing and draw the uh, draw out a kind of a halo effect anyhow. Now here we're putting the uh, the green effect in on the background and uh the first panel and with the the full moon I want it to stand out that there is light reflecting from the moon all the way up at the top we've got the blue the halo but also on the surfaces of the buildings where we're having some light a subtle reflection the the reflection's not the star of the show Fat Girl and that statue are the star of the show in panel one. <clears throat> I probably overthought this. I think I spent... Hmm, in real time, I probably burned eight hours or more on this. really like this uh, this page. It brings out a lot of moodiness. But even in the moodiness, there's that, uh, that, that patch of color, that, uh, I don't know if it's a spark of hope or an ember of virtue. I'm, I'm not sure what it is. That building, by the way, and the statue are in uh, separate layers in the back, so it's very easy for me to drop in the street light and uh, and keep it subdued without becoming a uh, a conflict. Mm. Uh, these colors going to have to change. I, I was going to go with green there on that left building but just a there's going to have to be some contrast between to, to, to give a field effect between Fat Girl and the second building and the third building plus we've when, when I got started with this I noticed that there is a different there is another building between Fat Girl on her left, just off her left arm, that's another building. Uh, we'll drop in another layer in between and and put uh, something appropriate there. So the FG standing out for the most part. Going to have to put some more color on that. That just doesn't look right. A little bit of reflectivity. So a little bit of green glass. That can't be the same green though. 
And then we're going to do the brick. And I confess I keep changing my mind on what color to put that brick at. The whole point of this, though, my uh, indecision, is um, to create a depth of field. It almost doesn't matter what I put there. It just has to create a depth of field. Now, about here is when I realized, even at her feet, I'm dealing with three buildings there's uh there's there's another building in between and i didn't realize this um the base of that brick and where her foot is there is another building in between there Either that or another, um, a whole new, uh, shoot, I've forgotten what it's called, uh, but a whole new platform going all the way around that, uh, that building with the sheer glass. Either way, this is a good way to handle it. Street lighting. Got to bring up the uh, the building just a bit, and then drop a shadow back on it. There's so many different surfaces there that uh, I I don't want the uh, the lighting to overpower her, but I also need enough light so that the uh, the shadowing stands out. with some brown if I make it gray. Now that orange can be coming from two directions. It needs to be coming from two directions to properly light her. And I'm making the decision on, on lighting entirely to, uh, to, to make a, a stylistic point, not a realism, a, a point in terms of realism. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm, I'm having to back up what I'm going to do with some shadow. Before I'm done with panel one, I'm going to come back with loads of inter, uh, uh, indirect lighting from the street fires and the street lights and uh, the, the crumbled city. You see, I'm, I've brought up the, the, uh, the orange level on the street in the second panel. But that's making things too bright, so we're going to have to drop some shadow on the side of that building. Uh, and what I've done is I've backed myself into kind of a corner on the the colors the uh, of that that brick that's under her feet. 
That's going to have to be kind of a grayish color with the browns added in, but we're going to have to intensify that and put it into shadow at the same time, drawing in more light from the uh, the orangey fires and lights and candles. Meanwhile, the Bradley is going to need some glass. It's got a lot of shapes to it. There's our headlights. Don't worry, we'll hit the uh, luminous layer there. That brown I was telling you about. We'll come back with some uh, some uh, berry or kind of a brickish, reddish. We'll get those features off the side of the building too. Some of that wasn't indecision. There was some actual technique happening there. I promise. <clears throat> cough, cough. Okay, now you see what I'm what I was saying. I had had to darken things up and then had to throw some indirect lighting on there. And now we need some more highlights. I want it to be interesting, but I don't want it to steal the show. And Fat Girl's running on top of the building because she's wanting to be stealthy. I don't want her to stand out too much. I want the, the reader to enjoy it, but Again, depth of field, depth of field. Mm -hmm. Tinkering with that pink layer. Although it's no longer pink, it's primarily that berry color. I'm really enjoying the brownish effect on that leather, even though it's intended to be pink. That's why I was telling you, this page is, is very fun. It's, uh, it's moody, but it... It brings out so much. And our action lines need to be lightened up. And here's where I decided that she was standing out too much. And then I'll uh, come back and throw some, uh, some highlight on her from the street side on panel three. We'll still have to put that Bradley green on on that. I at first I thought she was jumping to a uh, another building and I was going to paint that to be a building. Uh, but the very next page she's jumping on top of the Bradley, so I had to make that the Bradley green. I hope you like these kind of videos with the uh, the iPad re or the Procreate replays. It's um, it's not perfect. It's a little over compressed, but at least it's not real time. I mean, if you if you heard my thought process while I was doing this real time, 
He'd beat me with a stick. My tiny bit of OCD wants to slap a bright white in that circle on her back, but that steals the stealthy element from fat girl there. I, I want to not give in to those temptations um, when, when I have her doing something stealthy. At least for the moment, it's stealthy. Okay, we've got our red, we've got our orangey highlights on the plumes. On panel three, we're being very stealthy. It's just dark red, almost a blood red. Panel two, same thing. Panel one, we've got a pretty orange highlight on panel three. We've got a nice, bright, bright highlight there, which is unrealistic. You know it's unrealistic. But, okay, I'm getting ready to drop some luminous qualities here. Got our lights on the Bradley. A couple experimental swipes that didn't work. And got to bring up the... Uh, uh, the glow. And, and yes, I was arguing with myself there. Doesn't take too long. Another few seconds of this epilepsy seizure inducing nonsense. And we'll have an actual glow effect. How's that sound? Glow. I don't like that. I'll have to come up with a fancier word. In any case. Panel 2 is almost on fire enough. You know what I mean? Now we're dropping some of that into panel 1. But only a little bit. We only want the slightest corona of that fiery orange... Uh, we we want to acknowledge that it's there, but that's really all. And and then drop a little bit of a glow onto that bottom right corner. That that's all we need in panel one. We we don't want it to dominate. And yes, I still can't decide on what I like and what I don't in panel two. Smallest page, I could have dropped just bright yellow in there, and nobody would have cared. Ooh-wee! Look at this. Here we, we've got uh, a few hours in on this prime rip. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We're running a little under 400 degrees right now. Yeah. But you know, that's, that's just going to be greatness. Greatness. So what my little wife did is she implanted a handful of garlic cloves into that prime rib, both of them. And then coated the uh, the prime ribs with uh, with butter and uh, peppercorns. And let's let's not get that much light in the situation. Here we go. And and then uh, seared it up real good and it's been on for a few hours now and so uh, uh, we're going to have people over in a couple hours to eat and that oh I tell you what that is going to be so good uh, and you don't make you don't make it uh, well done no not prime rib you make it 
medium well medium medium yeah all right so I'm on I'm gonna go back inside and do some more comic pages and here's what the next page will look like the uh, this is page eight fat girl has leapt onto the Bradley and she's going to injure herself and slip and fall by the way if you don't mind go hit like and subscribe and ring that little bell so that uh, you can continue to get notifications and I can get my subscriber count up I'd appreciate that a great deal and uh, if you have something you would like to see me review, talk about, or do differently, or if you have a question about something, man, just drop me a comment in the uh, the YouTube comments. That'll that'll work fine. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Lonnie Webb. You can also find my videos over on Rumble. Just in case things change at Twitter or at uh, at YouTube, and for some reason we can't continue to do these little chats together, I would like to be able to stay in touch with you. So I am on Rumble as well. And if something were to happen to Twitter, <clears throat> you can find me on Parlor as well as No Agenda Social. And we're taking the same approach here on this page. It's pretty much, this is, this is all a layer of backgrounding. So I cut some big masks out and I threw backgrounds together. Um, not a lot of detail to go with here, so I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of making my my some I'm, I'm making my detailing uh, pretty abstract. Um, and and when we get through here, the uh, the street lighting will become a little more imposing to create a uh, unified guttural feel plus we'll do the uh, luminous layer again because we've got lots of opportunity for legitimate lens flare as opposed to what was done to Star Trek And the reason there's a pause there is I went about doing some mask cutting and got real involved in it. I can get a little OCD about that. Yep, yep. Up on that Bradley, throwing in some shadows. What I did was I put a shadow on all of those louvers on that back door. And I worked in a shadow underneath her leg. If I can cut a mask and do all of the painting with one swipe. I I will absolutely go all OCD and cut all of the mask I can. Again, we're going white on the action action lines. In this case, I went pure white because I, I just want it 
I want all of the action lines to be kind of um, to be unified in style. So we have three panels with action lines. I think the action lines uh, all went in the layer by themselves. <clears throat> by themselves, that is. And I backgrounded Fat Girl with some pink. Uh, and you already know I'm going to throw a, a new layer in and then put in skin. And then I will airbrush the features of her face in. On the Bradley... Doing a little more airbrushing with the uh, with the metal bits that should be a little reflective. Each one of those panels really needs to be a different type of metal. In real life, they're all painted consistently. But in comics, we like to throw a little bit of differentiation. That's really the name of the game with colors. A little bit of differentiation goes a long way. In that handle, I'm going to do a lot of differentiation on. See that reflection? That right there makes that panel. That little spot by itself. Taking what Evan's given me here, throw some shadows on. Still in panel two. Now, now we sneak over here to panel three. Throw some greens on. Moment of indecision. Because we need to, uh, really three different greens here. A little bit of orange from those flashing lights. There you see them cycling through those different greens, and then we'll drop a hint of orange back in that because there really shouldn't be any total shadow. Everything street street level, we're going to have some reflection off of something, and additional light from the candles and fires. Shadow there. There's the orange. Another shadow. There's some orange. This is a really easy page to get right, even though it looks busy. Evan's given me a lot to work with. The, uh, the lines, the angle lines just gives me gives me a lot of opportunities to throw in some shadow. Um, I know you probably look at it and didn't think, oh gee, there's an opportunity for lots of shadow there. Um, but yeah. Yeah, you know, all it takes is a little bit of shadow, a little bit of reflection, and you've got a lot more comic page than you started with. No more reflection, right, right from her hands, her face, her glove. It's a different color, but that's okay. This is not a mirror. This is a piece of painted metal. And we have our shadows. Yeah, I'm going to go through there and I'm going to louver all of those little pieces of metal 
and put a tiny shadow on them. Should make it look a lot more realistic when that's done. Plus we need to keep the shadow from where her hand is closest to the Bradley. white spots and I have to fill in with pink, throw down the color for our Bradley, uh, experiment a couple of tries there, cycle through the greens and get the underlying look that I want, uh, threw down the, some gray for the uh, that sliding door and then started putting in the shadow uh, for those louvers. And we're going to finish that up probably. It, it has to be darker, but I'm going to darken up the edges with a tiny bit of uh, a mix of perspective and contrast. He's really provided me the, per the perspective already, uh, so the, the color doesn't have to change a whole lot. And we'll drop a little color around the edges of those pieces of metal as well. And this is something that I did after looking at my own garage door. Not every panel is consistent on shading. They're slight differences. So I have dropped in just some slight differences in the shading from panel to panel. Um, it's not perfect and it's not supposed to be perfect. A little bit of real life. Just a little. Not too much. Don't want too much real life. This is escapism. Shadow and tints at the bottom of the Bradley and a little bit lighter at the top. And then across that bar piece, again, we'll have it more intense at the bottom and let the shadow rise and fade from there. That's purely stylistic. A little bit of orange in the, uh, the light, a little bit of red in the light down below. We'll... Uh, Throw some luminosity on that later. <clears throat> Doesn't take a lot to make a light. There goes some more pink. And we're going to have to really work on dropping the uh, the highlight and then, then follow up with a little bit of uh, darker color to contrast with. Haven't even done skin yet. See, there's that contrast. We can see the different types of material. Um, I'm going to use a touch-up brush and uh, drop some uh, ink splatter and some noise on that, uh, that glove to make it look worn. Here we got 
Watson. Shadows and reflectivity happening. This is going to be a busy piece in this bottom panel with all those reflections and yet while she is the focus of attention her falling is really the um, the star of the show for the page so talk about a balance you, you're tempted to just put all of the detail that you can into that. And when you're done, if you overdo it, it doesn't tell the story. <clears throat> I was actually tempted here to throw just a little bit of blur on, but I stopped myself because that... For me, that's that's just a, a rule. I I don't like it when I buy a comic and I find a computer effect. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to give me a Photoshop filter, ooh, I don't think I need to hire you to make me some entertainment. You know? Um, I bought a comic once. And it had some TV images that were photoshopped and used for uh, backgrounds. And I tell you, it looked so pitiful, made me so mad. And, and I, can, I can name a couple of comics that have done that. And I just do not appreciate artists who, uh, who, who cheat like that. It's like the one artist who had been tasked with providing a panel with Cyclops, and all he did was trace a picture of Brad Pitt. Just, ish. Anyway, so we get our action lines on now. Again, on panel four... <clears throat> On panel four, the action is the star of the show. The depth of field with the, the handle is important, but the action of her sliding off of the Bradley is very crucial. That's our intensity, that's our danger. Needs a, needs a little more in this panel here. I'm going to grab me some, some drink here. Uh, today I'm having a Diet Dr. Pepper from uh, Yield Kroger. There we go. And uh, and this is this is a fresh vintage. It's uh, It's been uh, kept at a consistent temperature ever since we brought it home. Oh, yes, indeed. <clears throat> now, there was some uh, some shading on the uh, on the glove. There will be more in a few minutes. Trust me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Allergies are really kicking in today. There we go. 
making that handle look like something. Painting in some color in the back. get a little bit of uh, shadow and again shadow intense toward the bottom also a little bit intense up above just trying to make that look like a, uh, a piece of metal now there it's green the other one I did is very gray so I'm going to have to silver that up And like before, the plume is the last thing I want to put color on. I don't want it to take away or to change the color design of the page. Which might be a fault in the way I look at color. There we go with some shading, more shading on the glove in panel two. That hand's doing a lot of work in the story. So we're going to put a lot of attention on it. Draw your attention as the reader to the, to the hand. So the hand has a lot more detail, a lot more shading. I'll throw some highlight on it. And some uh, some of this ink noise on there that's too much there we go there we go yeah weather up that leather a little bit I'm not sure leather can be pink and can be found to be pink in nature Okay, a little bit of indecision there. Too much, too little. How much is enough? How much takes away? There we go. Get a little bit of orange on the knuckles. Just a little bit of highlight. Needs a little on that index finger. Now we got some skin going on. Now I made a mistake when I first did this. I didn't realize that I had a, uh, a reference layer turned on and that left me some spots of pink on her face. I had to go back and airbrush over that. Now we're putting some shading on, make some definition on her face. Yeah, because you got light hitting her a couple of different directions. She's hurting. shoulder is at least wrenched her whole arm is at least wrenched yeah that 
under the eye. That's not right. So we have to go back and drop a little bit. And there needs to be a line, a wrinkle right there. And I'll put a little bit of a line around the eye that Evan didn't put the chin strap on and shade it some. And when we get to the teeth, we'll drop in, uh, we'll drop in some lip gloss on the lips and then we'll drop in some gray on the, uh, the teeth. Again, I, I like to use gray instead of white because I don't want to cause there to be a page transparency where there is no ink on that, uh, that full moon. That was gray. That, that was not actually white. And there was a little bit of blue added in. <clears throat> there we go. Have to take that all the way at once. Airbrush that in because we don't want those pink spots. They're okay on the gums. I'm going to come back and throw red there anyway. Gotta watch that. The reference page or reference layer will work against you. There we go. Gums. And now the lip gloss. I decided not to overdo the lip gloss like a big heavy uh, 1940s mercury red. That, uh, that candy apple red is just too red on Fat Girl. bit of orange oh, but so tiny amount can be too much plumes are starting to go on will be highlight on these plumes. We still have to get the rest of the action lines on there. Plus, fat girl in the, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five. In the fifth layer, we're going to still have to do some work on her armor. It's, it's calling for more so we can't just leave it as is. I mean, I could, but why? There, sorry about that. Drop my mic. Hmm. A little bit of shading here. <clears throat> I'll throw a little bit more. <clears throat> oh, and I need 
to mention one more time, um, please, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. That helps the YouTube algorithm uh, help me out. And in the comments, if you would, mention what you like to see more of. Do you like to see more smoked meat or more comic pages being colored? Uh, this week I'm coloring, and uh, I'll get back to uh, drawing some other things later on. And we got to darken that up under here. Got to have her chin shaded but not dominant or dominating you can find me on the twitters at Lonnie Webb you can find me on the rumble you can find me on the parlor at Lonnie Webb and let's see, where else can you find me? You can find me on noagendasocial.com. Years ago, I became a knight. I am Sir Mount. A lot of the things you see me do online are really Jean. I do appreciate her greatly. Jean over at throughcomic.com. I know a lot of you have been interacting with her. Yeah, well, we're we're still in the bottom panel doing these doing this uh, armor up. Uh, Jean has uh, has done a lot with everybody, and uh, I appreciate her for that. My wife and I have to feed Jean periodically and do a good job of it. Jean enjoyed that prime rib, I can tell you that. She really loved it. She, she begged me for the rarest, bloodiest piece of meat on the, on the uh, carving table. My goodness. I've never, I've never known a girl to want the, uh, the rarest piece of meat. Just knock the legs off of it and blow its nose and she's ready to eat. I see we've got some, some highlights now to go with those little, uh, bits of reflection on fat girl's armor don't worry your luminous is coming up i know a lot of you guys especially in the, in the comics gate world you guys live for the luminous effect it's coming When you're immersed in a story, I wonder what it is about luminosity that draws people in. I suppose it's like all the flying sparks when I was a teenager and saw Star Wars the first time. When those ships would explode and and just go to sparks, Battlestar Galactica on TV, the the fighter ships would blow up and they'd scatter into a whole bunch of sparks on the screen. That was very exciting to me visually, and I don't know why. I know it had a lot to do with motion and color. And who knows? I mean...
why in the world would it matter? But <laughs> motion, color. So I guess a little bit of overpowering glow in the luminosity layer. Again, I'm misusing, I'm using the word luminosity incorrectly in strictest sense of color. It is not luminous. Um, it's, it's just, uh, it's just a spray of color. That, that's really all it is. I am using a light pen for some of it. Um, so that, when, when you see it, you'll know it. I'll, I'll throw a light pin on the, um, the, uh, lights on the Bradley and in this case I'm planning ahead for that uh, that lens flare to draw a line diagonally from the top left to bottom right and keep all of our motion connected I have a lot of fun doing these. Now we got a little bit of orange on Fat Girl's right leg, where there's going to be the most street light. A little bit on her boots, and then up in layer one, we've got maybe too much on her backside. And her face there, I took it back off. Um, but with that light right there, it, it works out. It will work out. It doesn't yet. And there's correcting the mistake earlier. Realize that at her elbow pad, she had no room for the uh, the darker pieces of her uniform, so I put that in there. Fat Girl is by John Rhodes. It is drawn by Evan Queering. Painted by Lonnie Webb. Lettered by John Rhodes. And I hope you'll go over to Kickstarter and back it when it opens up. In fact, you might go ahead and reach out to John, see if you can get a copy of Fat Girl One, so you'll know where the story, where the story picks up. Here we go. We got our luminous coming together. Put the orange on first. The orange kind of has a yellow halo on it. Now what you're seeing here is a difference between flashes. If you stand close, 
to a uh, these new flashing lights, you'll sit, you'll s sort of notice that there are multiple elements, and when they're actually flashing, they uh, they aren't on all the time. I mean, they totally switch off, and and the glass, the reflective glass, provides the lighting. John Rhodes also provides us the rest of the hyperverse as well as Nothing Man. And I think he is doing a comic. It, it might be Nothing Man. He's doing something with AP coming up. Is that right? I might be wrong on that. Don't quote me. Okay, now for your luminous glow. Takes a couple of tries to get that the way I want it. Pretty close, pretty close. Getting better, but it's needs a little more, needs a little more. Gonna have to erase part of that. I don't like it. There we go. There we go. All right. So I didn't manage to get a uh, a video of the carving. The feeding frenzy just kind of descended on the meat, but I got a picture of my prime rib, and it was darn good. It was darn good. Um, I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving and I hope you're in enjoying what you can enjoy right now. Please click like, share and subscribe and uh, visit John, uh, John's projects, John Rhodes over at kickstarter.com. Evan Queering has, I believe, a project right now going on. Um, on Indiegogo, and if you search for Evan Queering, Q-U-I-R-R-I-N-G, you can find him. And uh, as for me, I will see you probably later on this week. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, click like. And if you didn't, thank you so much for waiting this long. And uh, And we will return another day. Thank you so much. Bye now.